Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sievers and welcome back to my spooktacular channel. So tonight I'm getting ready to have a dinner party with Ryan and a few of my cousins. And I'm really excited because I just finished putting up all of the Halloween decorations. So before I begin cooking, I thought I would give you a little tour of all of the apartment Halloween decorations that I've installed this year because I did go a little over the top. So come with me, let's start here. So we're in our foyer and I have this gorgeous chandelier up here and I just draped it with black gauze cloth. I buy a lot of my Halloween decorations at the dollar store, at Target. I really don't invest a ton of money in them, but I do take care of them year after year. So I've had this gauze for probably like eight years. Um, and I just think it's really fun for Halloween to be a little bit more whimsical than I normally am. So this is the front hall credenza. And what I love about this is I found two of these trees, they're Martha Stewart trees. And I found them on QVC, scrolling and shopping late one night in bed. And I thought those are gonna be so fabulous to kind of anchor just this area. So I have one here and I have another one in the salon, which I'll show you in a little while. And again, I just draped a really simple gauze cloth over my lamp. I filled my big clamshell with velvet pumpkins. They have little glitter stems, which I love. Black crows, these fabulous velvety kind of spiders, big spiders. I don't like anything too gory at Halloween. I like things to just be a little bit spooky and I like keeping things pretty monochromatic because I think it looks really chic. I have these sconces here that I just, all this is, these are little salad tongs, little skeleton salad tongs that I just kind of wedged in here to give a little spectacular effect. So come into my office, which is my kitchen. So I wanted to keep the kitchen still very usable because I'm recipe testing for a, a new book that's coming out next year. More about that much later. But I wanted to keep the kitchen really chic and kind of fun. You know, I spend a lot of time in here. So I have my little nutcracker, skeleton man, my cousin actually, we bought them together so we have matching ones. Her and I do that all the time. And I lined my back backsplash with beautiful white pumpkins and then these really just kind of fun, velvety trees and more of those same spiders. I kind of buy things, not kind of, I buy things in bulk and I buy things in multiples because I like to have the same element spread across everywhere because I think it just gives some continuity and it makes it seem like it's more curated and not just all kind of thrown together. So I have bottle brush trees here. These are black bottle brush trees. Aren't these so cool? And I got these at the dollar store this year. I just think they're great. They have a little sparkle to them and I bought a case of them. <laughs> Ryan does all the budgets, so. <laughs> And then here I have a, just a, my standard crock and I put more of those great salad tongs. See, they're just salad tongs. You can use them for serving. But I just bought multiples and I put them in standard kitchen crock because I thought that was really fun. Plus it's kind of like a fun conversation piece. So come over into the dining room. So my favorite thing I did this year was to the chandelier over the dining room table. So I chose some of the same white kind of gauzy stuff that I have in black. And this year I found these little tiny skeletons. Look at how adorable. I just love them. I found these little skeletons and I, they came as a garland and I cut them off of their twine and I used them kind of as crystals. So I didn't take any of the crystals off because I still wanted to get that glam and that you know really sparkly look, but I just put up like 40 of these skeletons. And then of course, black pumpkins. These are all faux pumpkins. They weigh nothing. 
And I mixed kind of this resin pumpkin with some of these black velvet pumpkins, which I just think gives a really nice kind of balance of textures and the at night, the black pumpkins kind of absorb the light, the velvet ones, and then the resin ones kind of reflect a little bit of light. I did in the windows. So my godparents sold their house and they used to have all of these pumpkins in their windows in, from September through Thanksgiving. And she gave them, my godmother gave them all to me. So I thought I would line the whole apartment, all of the windows in them, and then I have some, of course, classic orange jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. And then this is kind of where I have all of my fabulous bowls. And again, these are from my godmother, just little wooden pumpkins. These are just little wreath picks from the craft store. Just something to give, it's not really Halloween, but it just gives a little nod to autumn, which I really love. So let's go into the salon because, and Ryan, don't get that big surprise here. So come, Ryan, walk with me this way. There you go. So again, another, another chandelier, kind of light fixture here with the same black gauze. I put some little spiders into it. Really simple. I mean, it took me maybe an hour to do all of this. More of the great pumpkins that go across the window. And then I do collect vintage plastic jack-o'-lanterns. There's Lady. <laughs> so this is, this is a bar cart that we turned into this year, kind of the pumpkin area. These at night light up. And I have also all of these LED candles that are in here so that at night they have flickering flames. You can see that. And at night, this entire thing lights up. You can go over to my Instagram, Mark J. Seavers, and look at, um, there's a reel on there that shows this at night. It's really, really, really pretty. And then I have all these little LED remotes because you can also turn on the candles to the candelabra. Again, more of that black gauze. I think each one of these was a dollar. But, you know, I just think it looks great. Then, you swing around to the rest of the jack-o'-lanterns. So I went a little crazy this year with jack-o'-lanterns, but I thought how fun to do kind of, you know, I like to take one type of flower like hydrangeas or, you know, tulips and do big arrangements of just one single flower. And I thought, what if I did the same thing with plastic jack-o'-lantern pumpkins? So that's kind of what I did here. And again, at night, I just press this button and all of these jack-o'-lanterns light up with little LED candles in them. It's great. So, come this way. Of course, little nods of classic things, more wooden pumpkins with the decanters, thing of candy corn. Do you guys remember these? These fabulous, I think they were called popcorn, um, popcorn molds or like it was like pressed popcorn. And there are these things from, I mean, from my childhood, they're actually falling apart. And they're just these great little decorations that at night, this little lamp kind of illuminates it. But come look at the finale of this. So this is our haunted house this year. Isn't it so cool? So this started out as a pastel Fisher Price dollhouse. And I don't know how the idea, I think I was scrolling through YouTube and I saw a woman spray painting a house. She was spray painting and I think all gold for some Cinderella thing. And I thought, what about if I spray painted it matte black and then decorated it like the Adams family? So this, the hardest part was the spray paint. It took about four cans to cover all of that pastel color. But get up close because you can actually see how much detail is in the plastic, the molded plastic. These little creepy vines are all added on by hand. I just glued them. Those were actually these little plastic um, 
things I found at Michael's. These little pumpkins at the dollar store. I love them. I did the same pumpkins in black. I spray painted some black. I have a little bat up here. Again, more gauze covering the lamps. But isn't this so great? I just think it's such a fun kind of centerpiece to welcome everybody to dinner tonight. And I, but I just love the detail. I put in little curtains, little gauzy curtains. I hope you can see them. Ryan, let's go over here. Look at right through there. Look how cool that is. So you can see the little wispy curtains right here. I just love it. Little dead guy. Of course, lots of pumpkins, lots of gauze. And this was really, really fun. I'm going to show you a kind of a time lapse of how that all came together. And then my final Martha Stewart tree I found in QVC. So these really did kind of set the tone, I think, for the style of decorations I wanted to achieve this year. They're all LED. These have little twinkle lights. But I just think the scale of everything is just so fun. And I love that it's all really monochromatic. I think that's what keeps it still very elevated and still adult. I mean, if you looked around, you'd think Ryan and I have children, but he just has one big kid. That's me. <laughs> so I think it's time to go make a cocktail before I start dinner. I'm going to go grab my ingredients to make my pumpkin pie on the rocks, which is a fabulous cocktail. I'll link that down below in the description box. I mean, I don't know how it could be bad. It has delicious pumpkin liqueur and heavy cream and some spices. And I will see you guys really soon with more recipes coming up, another apartment tour, and of course, more holiday content. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so you're notified of new videos as soon as they post. Until next time, have a spectacular Halloween. <laughs> Bye, guys. Here is a time-lapse video of me decorating my haunted house. So I gathered everything I needed, a glue gun, and all I really did was just have fun. I put on some great Halloween music, poured a little glass of wine, and just kind of let creativity flow. And I am so happy with how spectacular it turned out.